Okay, hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, welcome to this week's class and for crypto mastery. And so it's um, kind of a quiet market, everybody. And uh, just welcome some people here. We've got Alex and Rick and Glenn and Perry, Mary, Ying. Welcome, Ron, Rick, Ray, Terry, Stephen, and someone's iPad, John. So welcome, everyone. If you're watching the replay on YouTube, make sure to hit like. Uh, it helps us get the word out. And uh, let's dive into it. So I'm just making sure uh, you guys can see my screen. I see that you can. And I got the chat window pulled up. So uh, we'll take questions uh, more toward the end. I want to go through some news. And since we're real quiet in the market, I'll just pull this up. I mean, this uh, Bitcoin was gray a second ago if we weed out the one percenters. Um, nothing's moving at all, really. And so we've got time to unpack the news and talk about things. I do have some things to share with you. And uh, so uh, the TLDR on this, by the way, is if you're wondering what's happening next in crypto, I think we're still in for sideways and mostly sideways and down market through the rest of April. And then we shoot higher in May. We had, again, seven green monthly candles on Bitcoin. So it's time for a reset. And that's the uh, the news there. Uh, and not a good thing, not a bad thing. It's, it's actually a good thing. If we pull back down and um, even retest this green buy block here around 66K, get a double bottom on that. Uh, that would be great. But on the monthly candle, it's exactly where we want it to be. We don't want it bigger. We don't want bearish engulfing candle because then we could go lower. We want it just like this with a bit of a bottoming tail, giving bullish intention and giving us that reset so that we can really shoot, start to shoot higher in May. So anyway, that's a TLDR if you guys uh, are uh, just tuning in or don't have a lot of time. All right, let's unpack some news. How about that? Everyone ready? Cool. All right. So um, let's see, President Biden asking Congress to kill the American Bitcoin mining industry. And uh, let's see about that. Um, you know, I, it's, I wish more people were talking about Cynthia Loomis over in Wyoming and what they're doing by burning the uh, methane. I was having a, a late lunch with a friend of mine last night uh, who wasn't aware of this. They are using the methane created from oil refining to burn and power the Bitcoin mining rigs. So it's a net zero footprint on the ecology and uh, the environment. So uh, I don't understand why uh, that, that should be happening all over. So President Biden asking Congress to take aim at the American Bitcoin mining industry. Why would he do that? Uh, citing China as an example for the United States to follow. Well, China didn't, they keep binding, uh, banning Bitcoin, but they uh, are one of the largest holders of Bitcoin. So, um, you know, um, and, and part of the reason they banned it is because of the coal reserves were going down uh, and all of that. So, I, I mean, that's just not a great idea. Why would he do So we'll see. We're not going to get into politics here. Uh, so what's basically happening? This is kind of new news and um, not great news. So, uh, you know, mining won't stop. And and certainly why would they do that when the mining has just been cut in half as far as the uh, supply they can produce? I guess ostensibly the power to run the Bitcoin mining rigs is going to, for the same Bitcoin, will double. So this is also probably true, but efficiencies will continue to come down as the uh, the uh, GPUs coming out of NVIDIA get more and more powerful. And uh, and so, you know, there's there's a network effect and it will continue to get cheaper and easier to do. Uh, but again, well, I mean, I guess if we don't, if we're not uh, doing our own oil drilling anymore, then that's sort of uh, a moot point also. So let's just see and unpack this a little bit. Got a lot of news to cover, so won't spend too much time on this. So let's see. Despite giving the green light for Bitcoin ETFs, uh, they, they're trying to hammer down on the mining. And seems the Fed seems hell-bent on destroying the industry, even though it operates on a cleaner energy grid than you will find in most countries. So let's just see, get to the bottom line here. And um, yeah, here, I, I, see, I had a feeling they were going to talk about her. I didn't even look at it. Cynthia Loomis, a Wyoming Republican, um, doesn't matter, uh, known as much on the X writing, proposed 3% punitive tax on digital asset mining would destroy any foothold the industry has in America. Is that what they're trying to do, a 30% punitive tax? Um, I, You know, I, I don't know. It's one more reason uh, to uh, not vote them back into office. And, and I'm not saying who to vote for. I'm just saying they haven't done a particularly good job at keeping things afloat. There's really one thing they're really good at is spending money that we don't have. Uh, let's see. We introduced controversial proposal to impose 30% excise tax on the cost of electricity used for Bitcoin mining. Uh, draconian proposal, great uh, word there, called the Digital Asset Mining 
<laughs> energy tax, DAME for short, that's funny, uh, could lead American Bitcoin miners from the various platforms to flee American soil. Um, you know, that would just be bad for us. I don't know why. Uh, and um, uh, it's, it's somewhat comical, though. One of the biggest miners from China flew at great expense, packed up all their mining gear from China when China banned Bitcoin mining and flew it over to West Virginia. <laughs> so they're, uh, they're going to be a mobile uh, Bitcoin mining company here at some point soon. Uh, RFK, love him or hate him, uh, saying cryptocurrency is led by Bitcoin along. And, and so, sorry, I only say that because I know privately uh, one or two of you are not big fans of RFK. Um, and uh, I had this discussion last night, and it's interesting, certainly, that um, uh, majority of the Kennedy family are, are not either. I like I like a lot of what he has to say, but uh, it is kind of um, he is bent on the uh, conspiracy theory side. So it's what do we do, you guys? What do we do? Um, time to get your uh, your citizenship over in uh, what's it called? The one that we just all are signing up for uh, in uh, I can't think of the name all of a sudden. Uh, you guys know the one, the one to use for KYC. Uh, somebody drop it in the chat. I'm drawing a blank on that. But um, anyway, or, or second citizenship, like Mike has just gotten citizenship in Mexico. Not bad to have a secondary citizenship. Yes. Thank you, Alex Palau. Uh, you could get a Palau ID for your KYC. I'm not recommending that. Not financial advice. Just saying that uh, it's, um, you know, or or get your liber. What is it called? The the one, not libertarian, Um and the other uh, country that uh, that we were interviewing, I interviewed the president of Liberland. You can get your Liberland citizenship and uh, and and uh, escape all this craziness over here in the U.S. Uh, of course, Liberland does not have any physical land. It, it's very small footprint over there by Bosnia and Serbia, and uh, it's not very stable over there. So scratch that. At any rate, um, so the the Biden regime has proposed the Dame tax in May before it was quickly shot down by lawmakers. Good. The administration swept under the rug the same month. Apparently, they stashed it for a later date. And uh, so they're putting it as part of the 2025 budget proposal. As I understand, that's to spend another seven trillion dollars we don't have. And um, yeah, look at this. Uh, tax would be phased in from 10% first year to 20% second year. Okay, so there's time, 30% by the third year. There's time to uh, get somebody else more crypto-friendly. Um, who will be our white horse uh, to come out of nowhere? And uh, Cynthia Loomis uh, is Bitcoin favorable. Maybe Michael Saylor will run for president one day. And uh, honestly, you know, he he does seem to be a, be a very ethical person. And uh, I would... Um, and pretty sane minded. I don't know. What do you guys think? Uh, Michael Saylor for president. Who knows? Maybe it'll happen. I found it interesting, by the way, that uh, Mark Cuban was very public about uh, how he's super happy to pay his taxes. And the uh, translation is that um, part the IRS is targeting high net worth people. I have a wealthy friend uh, and they're going after some um, back taxes that uh, he doesn't owe. Uh, and according to him, but he's saying a bunch of his friends also getting pulled in by those 86,000 uh, IRS agents, uh, you know, for the record, you should pay your taxes. I, I believe that. But, um, you know, I think probably he got uh, zeroed in on and maybe he has political aims in the future. So that's why he's very public about uh, paying his uh, taxes. He paid like 280 million in taxes. That's what happens when you're a billionaire. Um, unfortunately, we're, we're, we're signing a lot of that money over to Ukraine and uh, other other places. Sorry, guys, I'm not going to get into politics. It's just uh, sometimes you just have to say what is going on. Uh, and um, let's see, skimming this headline, skimming some other headlines. Uh, freeze assets, Venezuela looks to crypto to bypass oil sanctions. Interesting. White House said it would it would make miners pay their fair share. Um, I wonder how they would do that, I guess, actually. I guess they could somehow shut it off unless it was, uh, you know, solar driven. Who knows? Um, uh, but it's just, yes, 30, oh my God, it grew from, okay, sorry, I misread that. Didn't mention that sector grew. I, I saw 37.8%. I thought maybe they were going to raise it to that. So here we have Cynthia Loomis. Um, you know, hopefully she'll be a vice presidential, you know, ticket someday. I, I don't know that she has a presidential aims. I think that would be a bit of a challenge, but you never know. All right. Um, backfire. Okay. So the administration's plan of attack, however, could ultimately backfire on the beleaguered president. There's some great, normally we're making fun of the editors uh, of these articles for their uh, word salad, but there's some uh, really fun words here today. Beleaguered president who enjoys less than 40% approval from voters in most surveys. 
Uh, certainly understandable. Uh, certainly, Dame tax won't raise much after it kills the entire industry. I mean, that also true. I mean, what is he trying to accomplish there other than raise money to uh, send overseas? Uh, and and uh, anyway, so enough about that. Um, Ordinals proponents should demand a new Bitcoin for. I think that's all we want to talk about, but it's worth noting. And there's another fun word, nuked. Um, yeah. So uh, anyway, uh, Kadan Stadelman. Uh, I don't know. I, first time I'm going to compliment one of these editors. Nicely done. Well written article. I like it. Cheers. Okay. So uh, and that's Coin Telegraph, uh, as uh, as we can see. So uh, let's see a little advert for iTrust Capital. They do a pretty good job. I uh, I do use iTrust Capital for my IRA. And uh, just deployed some more capital into Solana and Ethereum. I think I think we're looking pretty strong here for the you know, the near term. We could see a bit of a pullback, but I think it looks stronger than, uh, you know, and, and worth getting in uh, into the market a little bit more. I'm not going all in, just a little bit. Bitcoin's 200-day average is approaching record high and why that matters. So the 200-day simple moving average, we don't really watch that too carefully. And uh, let's see, simple moving average, one of those mi widely tracked indicators, right? So, you know, um, that's what we're, we, traders on Wall Street, the 200 SMA is often tracked there. And uh, we are quite a bit above that. So what does concern me is when we get that far above, you know, in the, in the sky, as it were, I call it in the sky, kind of like, you know, good old fashioned Chinese weather balloon when it gets way high in the sky and just floats around a bit. Um, uh, it's more of a target to get shot down. Maybe there's a better analogy, but um, I don't want all this jewelry is showing up here on these ads. I'm just trying to keep going here. Um, Bitcoin 200 day average on track to challenge its previous peak. OK, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we'll look at that on our own charts. Let's keep going. BlackRock uh, Bitcoin ETF is halfway to setting a new record. Yeah, we're going to look at uh, the ETF flows. You know, we've had some minor outflows, nothing too much and too bad. I'll pull that up here. They have uh, stagnated a bit uh, on the market cap. So BlackRock up to 18 billion. Actually, the uh, flows are still increasing. So we're up to 28 billion between Fidelity and BlackRock. And of course, right around 5 billion on ARC and Bitwise. And so let's pull up, hey, Apollos and see what theirs shows. They've got a little bit more of a visual, visual representation there and uh, similar stats. So that's good to know. And 28 billion, uh, quite a bit higher than, than Grayscale. So that's, you know, we, we, we steadily been see Grayscale getting smaller. Uh, Grayscale in blue, Fidelity in pink. I don't know why it's not green. Green is that uh, black rock. So Fidelity is kind of, you know, these are kind of stagnating and slowing down. Um, but we, uh, you know, we we do see uh, net inflows, and so uh, that's all good. And uh, anyway, so BlackRock Bitcoin ETF halfway to setting new record. We'll look at that in a moment. And despite most Bitcoin ETFs seeing outflows recently, BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF has seen impressive inflows. We already know that. All right. So anything else? and grow from seven okay not really el salvador hacked leaked code of the state bitcoin wallet Did you guys hear this this is uh in today's news um i have not unpacked this yet so uh, apparently their their codes now hopefully it's not their password after leaking the entire database of chivo users i don't know what that means um started releasing the wallet's code uh, El Salvador state operated bitcoin wallet chivo okay so that, i didn't know that so that's the name of their state uh, wallet, I guess. Um, and if you didn't know, the El Salvador government uh, made Bitcoin a national currency and they decided to give everybody a little bit of Bitcoin uh, so that they would have to basically uh, get their own wallets. And this is the wallet called Chivo, apparently, and it says hackers expose more sensitive information related to the wallet. Uh, anyway, hacker group known as Cyber Intelligence SV released part of the source code Black Hat. And it's like they have nothing better to do. Um, it's a shame, but it's also a necessary rite of passage. Uh, maybe that's not the right term, but but yeah, I think it is necessary evolution of where we have to get to and to ensure security on this. And the only way to do that is to have the hackers figure it out. I'm a SaaS founder and uh, building a Web3 SaaS. And one of the things we will do at the right time is hire what's called as ethical hackers. And software companies will do this and hire ethical hackers and say, hey, there's a bounty. If you discover any bugs, if you hack in, then uh, you can get a reward for that. Hopefully that uh, they will opt for the reward and not drain all of the money inside of this. This is why we're going to try to do that early. 
So it says uh, everything is free for you. Not clear on if they've taken any money, though. Yeah, exposure of personal data, 5 million Salvadorians. That's a shame. Or almost the entire adult population of the country, which was reported in early April. Hmm. Well, I don't know. If, what What does that mean? Source code VPN that belongs, you know, uh, unless to talk uh, <laughs> for free, as long as one of you nosy government people wants to talk. So maybe they are looking for money in the end. I'm looking for if they shared like passwords and if they're wiping the Bitcoin out of it, certainly not a good thing. We'll have to keep an eye on that and see how that evolves. Let's hop over to the daily huddle. And uh, let's see, just we're going to check some comments here. Fed meeting soon may shake everything up. Yeah, Perry says. So, uh, you know, probably why things are quiet. They want to see what happens on the uh, Fed comments here coming up. Chinese miners that all moved to the U.S. a few years ago must be tired of both governments messing up their business. Yes, exactly. Uh, where can they go? I had a friend years ago was uh, this close to buying an old coal plant in Vladivostok, Russia. And if you don't know where Vladivostok is, uh, I do because uh, I actually, my old programmer from 20 years ago was from Vladivostok. It's basically Siberia. And uh, there was a time when uh, he had no money for heat, oil, and I sent him a thousand dollars and he was the only, one of the only people in his village to have uh, heat that winter. Uh, later helped him and his family emigrate to the United States uh, some of you have seen him on our, uh, we, we still are in touch and he makes great software we've promoted in the past. Uh, anyway, um, uh, my, a different friend that was, that was going to buy an old coal plant to power Bitcoin mining. A deal fell through, um, you, you know, uh, dealing with Russians is, uh, is tricky business. So, um, anyway, um, uh, but, uh, the point of all that is if you could move your plant offshore, kind of like they're doing, I think in El Salvador using, uh, volcanoes, to using the steam from volcano lava to power the Bitcoin mining. Brilliant. I think we'll see more and more innovative solutions for this. And eventually, uh, where will the Bitcoin mining land? Maybe it'll be on an asteroid somewhere uh, circling the sun and beaming that energy back to us. Uh, who knows? <laughs> so, um, Most vertical leg for altcoins since 2021 is now on deck, crypto analyst says. Let's take a look at that. You know, will we get an altcoin season and when? There's certainly two camps to this. Some are saying the money flows into Bitcoin for the parabolic rise, and others are saying maybe we get a big altcoin rally. I think, uh, you know, Bitcoin probably will lead, but we'll have to see. That's usually what happens. Uh, and also we have this whole narrative around the base chain and the memes on the base chain. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that when we get into that. And we'll talk about that more in tomorrow's class in our M3 Active Trader class, which we go a little deeper and really dive into some trading opportunities, etc. cetera. Uh, we'll tell you more about that if you guys want to learn more. Many of you are in that class. So stay tuned. Uh, let's see. Analyst unveils Bitcoin path toward bull market top. Says this altcoin will be one of the firsts. As always, we want to be aware of advertorials where they're trying to be newsworthy, but they're really promoting one of their own altcoins. And so usually you can spot those. They're sort of intermixed and uh, it's called content content based marketing. And it's got some legit things. And then there's some that you have to sort of question. Uh, either way, uh, all of this leads toward mass adoption. So it's all good. Meme coin mania, there you go, onboarding thousands and thousands of people into Base's economy. Guys, I swear I didn't see that. Maybe my subconscious noticed that. But uh, yeah, Base, Base Chain, Coinbase's L2, their goal is to get onboard. Coinbase's, their goal is to onboard a million new users. Uh, I'm sorry, um, a billion. And I don't know they'll they get they'll get there, but if they get to 200 million... I was watching a really interesting guy over the weekend. Uh, he's a really very good meme coin trader uh, that uh, was speculating the same thing. This base is Coinbase is going to onboard lots of people to crypto. So whether, whatever you think about meme coins, it's true. They don't have any utility. That's not the point. I mean, it's pure degenerate speculation um, to a point. But the benefit is the utility is onboarding people who maybe don't understand crypto yet. They're a little scared of Bitcoin and, and what does it mean? But they will go and buy like a Dogecoin or a Brett token, one of my favorites, uh, obviously. <laughs> Uh, and uh, and also, you know, like Pepe, Pepe, uh, Pepe had a breakout yesterday. Uh, whole point of this, um, Coinbase is going to be uh, pointing out and making it obvious on the news 
that these meme coins on the base chain are running and uh, Brett is taking the lead, although it started as a Solana meme token. And uh, it's important to note also, these are not endorsed or created by the underlying token. They're community-based. And so remember that. Uh, and uh, again, not financial advice, uh, but it, it, and they they certainly can run quite a bit, but uh, they can they can drop just as fast. Point is, again, base chain onboarding lots of people, Coinbase onboarding lots of people onto Coinbase. They're going to be promoting all of these tokens and meme coins on the base chain. Uh, and we do talk about that. And I did a video on how to convert money uh, using your MetaMask uh, from the Ethereum based tokens, how to get it onto base chain and how to bridge that over to base. Uh, we've got a video there. So again, uh, find out more about that uh, if you don't already know at moonstream.io and slash M3. And uh, you can learn more about that. That's our Wednesday class, uh, Active Trader. Includes all of our, our uh, industry-leading indicators that do give us an edge, uh, except for the Pro Pack. It includes the basic ones. And these have given us, uh, they've basically told us every inflection of major market moves. And so if you like that, you get that included. Learn more about that here and you can read some reviews. Okay, if you're watching uh, on the replay there. Okay, so back to the news here. And you guys know I always say, show me the charts, I'll tell you the news. That's why the news is kind of boring today. Uh, nothing really happening in the markets here today. So let's see, trader that called the 22, 2022 bear market bottom. Well, that was me. Uh, if you guys uh, know in M3, we launched it in the December of 2022 in the depths of the bear market, right around 16.5, which I had forecast exactly 16.5, five months before that, back in May, uh, back when our uh, good old friend uh, Dylan LeClaire at um, a whale mating at the Bitcoin conference said that we wouldn't go below 30K. I, I said, uh, I think we'll go below 20. And then I forecasted 16.5. So we nailed that. Uh, and then it went long in uh, December and in January of 2022. So I wonder who they're talking about here. They they didn't uh, reach out to me. Well, I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, just having a little fun. Um, by the way, our indicators were the leading uh, uh, signal for that, uh, for calling that bottom. And, and also the bottom mid-summer 2021 and uh, telling us to get out at the top in December of 2021 and in January of 2022. So just a little bit of a walk down memory lane. Let's see. Okay, I don't want to get too far into the weeds here. A trader that called, let's just unpack this a bit. Popular trader for several accurate crypto market calls. I wonder who that is. The pseudonymous analyst known as Dave. Dave the Wave. Okay, well, uh, why be pseudonymous? Uh, 147,000 followers, social media X. Uh, Bitcoin could reach 169,500 in the last quarter of 2024. Um, I don't know, maybe, I think 155K, uh, more likely. We'll see. Um, but uh, either way in that range, current cycle expects to generate 626, blah, blah, blah. So, okay. And possible path. We'll look at our own charts and, uh, and see what we can see there. We have a chart already on that uh, that study. All right. Uh, Daily Hot also says the most vertical leg for the altcoin since 2021 is now on deck. Says another crypto analyst. Uh, and so, uh, let's see who that is. Tech Dev. Uh, tech Dev. I wonder if it's the same Tech Dev that um, kind of, uh, he, he he launched his own coin. And uh, who's the guy on YouTube who uh, is the, he goes after the scammers and everything. Uh, Coffeezilla. I think Coffeezilla exposed him as his, his million dollar coin. If it's the same guy, it was kind of a scam. It was, um, I don't know. I think that's who this is. Uh, anyway, he claims to be the tech dev of previous tech dev of Google and now turned crypto expert. And they're all over the place. Uh, you can you can barely throw a stick these days without hitting a crypto expert in the back of the head. And uh, you guys know it's time to get out of the market when your Uber driver starts giving you crypto tips. Uh, unless, of course, it's uh, our good friend Sam, uh, and uh, who's, uh, who's a pretty good trader. Yeah, he was coaching client and M3 client there for a while. So he learned from the best. There you go. Uh, so what is his pattern here? Is this cup and handle? Not sure what he's looking at. And uh, no, not really. It's I like these bottoming patterns. Let's see. Looks at the alt. Uh, so he's suggesting the altcoin market cap, looking at the logarithmic moving average divergence. So, you know, lots of indicators out there. Fortunately, we don't need to get in all these fancy indicators because we have our own. The LMACD indicator is designed to reveal changes in an asset's trend, strength, momentum. Uh, I'm not hating on it. Uh, it sounds interesting. 
And but I I don't, you know, sometimes you get too many indicators and it just confuses us. So uh, this doesn't really tell me a lot here. And I don't want to confuse what I already uh, have uh, my trusted my trusted path is the indicators are the indicators we use. Uh, let's see. Perry's saying someday nuclear power plant uh, plant Bitcoin mining. Sure. Totally makes sense. You know, why not hook up these submarines? How about this, you guys? You know, start putting Bitcoin miners in all these nuclear subs around the world. Uh, you know, so it powers heat, heats the submarines, although it might get too hot, turn turn them into cooked sardines, I guess. But, um, you know, that down at the depths, you know, you're mining Bitcoin. And I guess the problem is communicating with all the nodes. You'd have to have Internet somehow. Uh, and that might be a little tricky. But uh, anyway, uh, who knows? Nuclear power. Sure. Why not? I'm, I'm all for it. All right. Analyst unveils Bitcoin path to market top. It was this uh, different uh, pseudonymous expert here named Blunts and unveils path toward bull market top. We've already done that. And by the way, you can find out more about these things uh, if you're just watching this over at, um, uh, where am I going with this? Uh, it's, I've got too many charts open. This one here over on, the trading view by the way there i just started doing live streams again and uh damned if they didn't just message me and say they're doing away with live streams so they're gonna park those on trading view under the streams or i think it's under videos or ideas but um uh, if you click on you can find me under brett fogel i've got lots of ideas on here and uh some of them have even been right how about that you guys you look up the uh, revised path to bitcoin 155k to 210k here and uh, we'll revisit that in tomorrow's class. And I've been updating that as we go. And also a newer study that looks like this that uh, shows how we could get to 250,000. Both of those study do, studies do. And also my most recent post is how the IBIT and, uh, is giving us signals and the DXY uh, is, is rolling over. I want to look at the DXY here today to give us some idea where we could go. Okay, um, coming back over here. So essentially, that's a uh, Bitcoin path toward bull market top. You know, um, timing wise is very hard to predict. Uh, there, there's some people that are calling for a melt up going very quickly from here, starting in about two weeks, seeing a very rapid para parabolic rise. And maybe we peak uh, earlier, uh, August, September, November. Uh, and then seeing, uh, you know, if we start seeing deflation, then certainly possible that we see a big correction in the market. And I have been talking about a hypothesis and I don't have any reasons or evidence for this. It's just it's just my spidey sense saying maybe we have this peak 2024 and uh, and then they sell it off hard, wreck a lot of the traders. And uh, we see that sort of double cycles like we saw in 2013, where then we pull back and we did go back 76%. It doesn't look like much, but 2013, we had a peak 76% decline that does qualify for a bear market on Bitcoin. Altcoins will get wrecked and then another fast rise, uh, rush up to the uh, second peak. Uh, so we'll, it's just a hypothesis that we're going to keep in mind. Uh, but that plays well into that deflationary bust that uh, some people are starting to talk about. And we'll have to see. Uh, no way to know at this point. Closely followed. Uh, so he says that we'll likely see a new all-time high in the next two weeks. So that would be over putting us over 74,000 or so, this uh, person Blunts is saying. Uh, but we're on the same page here. I think we do push higher in May, not in April, because we already talked about that. We need a, a refresh, a reset, a red candle on that monthly time frame. And uh, so all of the uh, the, the moon boys, uh, as uh, you know, the, the, I don't usually use that term, but all of the perma bulls that think we're just going to keep going printing green monthly candles forever, uh, I don't think so. So um, let's see what happens. Uh, so this person's saying they've got like you know decent amount of followers, of course, certainly a lot, um, you know over two hundred fifty thousand. That's uh, pretty decent. He likes the Elliott wave theories. I don't use Elliott wave because I find it unnecessary. And, uh, you know, you could go down a lot of paths there. And, uh, you know, it just reminds me, though, back in 2021, there was a really smart trader that I was following. And um, I, I won't remember mention the name. I'm trying to remember. Uh, uh, Bronson the Shark, I think it was. Really, really good guy. We became friends. And uh, I was calling for a bearish reversal based on a head and shoulders pattern. And uh, he was using Elliott Wave saying we push higher to new highs. And, uh, and he was wrong. Um, he was right a lot. And he's got... He's got a lot, a lot of Ethereum that he was buying over the years. I won't say how much, but he did just build a $35 million home in a, uh, somewhere and um, I, I, to protect his privacy, I won't say, uh, somewhere in the Western United States. 
uh, he was buying Ethereum early, early on. Uh, but anyway, um, if he's if you're holding long term, uh, he, he's he's doing OK. It doesn't matter. Uh, but uh, anyway, uh, five wave rally is certainly possible. Um, some of these you know, these things do move in in wave cycles. I'm not sh I'm not shooting it down. I just it, it's one thing you don't need to go learn. I certainly can if you want to, but I find um, too many things can give you, uh, make it harder to make correct calls. Analysis paralysis, everybody. So this person's saying, ultimately expecting to top around 120,000. That's an interesting number. Uh, he's saying based on his wave five, wave three, yada, yada, yada. I don't know. I don't know you guys. Any of you use wave, uh, this Elliott wave? Um, I'm familiar with it. I just haven't found uh, that to be as, as uh, useful as the simple things and the indicators that we use, which really give us the edge because especially with the ERI, which we're going to talk about, uh, this is primarily also a training class. Uh, the early reversal indicator, hence the name, gives us an early reversal indication. And basically it does that following the footsteps of the whales and the smart money. All right. Uh, Blint's also radar locked in Ethereum. Competitor Near Near had a nice little breakout yesterday. Let's look at Near when we come back to it. And uh, yeah, so uh, man, putting in a rocket candle, I believe. I'll have to see if it closed with that. Rocket candles uh, is one of our other trading signals that we have programmed. All right. Meme coin mania onboarding thousands. So that's also what I talked about. And again, good for crypto onboarding. You know, we have to realize that we're still in the early adopter phase of all of this stuff. And uh, basically, the closer we get to the sort of early, you know, the 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 mass, uh, what does it go? So there's innovators, early adopters, early majority, late majority, and then the laggards. So early majority is when things really start to heat up. And, uh, you know, we're we're early. We are still early. So that's good for us, you guys. And uh, so basically, though, we want to uh, make sure the masses are coming on. The early majority is going to help fill our bags. Remember that. So we want to um, encourage that any way we can. Meme coins is the onboarding. It's like the free sample. It, it's like uh, it's like the crack uh, of the uh, uh, I don't want to use a drug a reference, but you get the idea. Um, it's a gateway. So uh, Pollock believes meme coins or cultural phenomena will drive millions of people into adopting base in the future, as I already said. So, um, you know, uh, I think we'll, he says we'll build more conviction. And, you know, so these meme coins, they'll go on, they'll buy their Brett token. Uh, I, I do think Brett is going to be a big, um, uh, big winner in that space. It's, it's a really fun community and I'm not pushing it. I do have some, by the way. But uh, it's, it's the Pepe coin of the base chain. And uh, also there's one for Solana. Also, uh, it's the same graphics. Uh, it's, in case you're wondering how that happened, I was talking to uh, one of the devs, the guy running the Solana-based Brett meme coin. And he said, well, the original dev abandoned the project and all the, the images were sort of open source, community-based. So they ran with it, had a, had a nice little run. And then uh, the uh, the base chain launched it themselves, and they have a much bigger community uh, right now. And uh, so that's what's happening. They kind of stole it. They kind of hijacked and uh, kidnapped the Brett token. But uh, I think it's going to run and do well over the long term, again, because Coinbase onboarding a lot of those users. So at any rate, do your own research and uh, financial advice. You get the idea. But uh, saying they're going to be one of the biggest drivers because they're doing that work out of consistently onboarding more and more folks. And a really creative way that's base uh, Coinbase, um, in their company. And one of the interesting things too, though, I will point out, is because Coinbase had so many issues with the SEC and they kept trying to get some uh, meaningful regulation guidelines from SEC. And of course, the SEC was uh, not saying a word, but regulating through enforcement. Um, <clears throat> Coinbase uh, is very and smartly making a, a flourishing meme coin community because here's the kicker you guys because it's not considered a security and um and so they can get away with it and that's really what they're gonna they're gonna use this as a way to onboard millions of users without having to worry about uh, the sec and old old man gensler coming after them uh, so anyway, I, I thought that was fascinating. And and then in the process over time, they can start telling people about these other cryptos, uh, you know, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, et cetera, and Solana. All right, Bitcoin, how are we doing on time? We're probably, uh, how are we doing on time here? I can't, it's, uh, I can't see it. 
and I don't know. I'm just going to keep going. Um, my finally for my guys, you guys, my nemesis has been my taskbar on these things. And now it finally has disappeared when I, when I want to find out what the time is. So, um, anyway, let me just do this here. Maybe it'll show up now. Apparently not. All right. No problem. No, no problem. We're talking about here. What was the news headline here? SEC lawyers resign after gross abuse of power in crypto case. That wasn't the original headline. Why? There was something else here when I first landed. Uh, it was Bollinger Bands. Um, we'll take a quick look at this. Bands hit level that saw Bitcoin price squeeze past 50K. Yeah, I mean, um, we do, we've do. we got our own pro indicator called Bollinger Bands Pro. Let's take a look at that really quick. This is the monthly chart. I want to get over to a... Uh, uh, Bitcoin chart. We will look at some liquidations here in a minute, but let's just do this really quickly and turn on so we can go side by side on these Bollinger Bands. Um, it's not really that telling. I, I'm more interested on our our ERI, our early reversal indicator, and our trend strength, strength indicator. My TSI are both green. We bounce nicely out of this order block zone, which is another one of our pro indicators too. And uh, by the way, hopefully you guys can see my mouse. Okay, you can. So our uh, our magic formula here, and uh, we'll talk about our trend, our trading success checklist, which you guys can get for free if you don't have it already. Go over to, I think, moonstream.io slash free checklist, or you can go to moonstream.io. There's free resources down at the bottom of the page, and you can get that free checklist. And it basically lets you check off when you see things like, uh, these different uh, things like this ERI, uh, this green arrow here, which has been very good at calling market cycle bottoms, especially when it lines up with this trend strength indicator going green. And then we layer in the order blocks. We have these order blocks right in that 60K region. Great buy signal. And now we have, let's see, did we, we almost had a rocket yesterday. It didn't quite close toward the top. Those of you who know, you know, uh, the average true range is not quite in an entry zone yet. But uh, we uh, we do have nice look at that that EMA ribbon. Look at that that uh, that looks beautiful, guys. I think we are ready to bounce here. When we see the EMAs really tighten like that, uh, we usually push up higher. The downside, though, what we always want to watch is that downtrending channel. So we need to see a breakout of this this uh, trend channel. And if I redraw it, I guess we could redraw it there. Um, so we want to see it come up and retest outside of this. Then we have the macro bull flag that can push us higher. And we talk about targets in our M3 class tomorrow. Uh, but what I wanted to show also is this Bollinger Band. Um, I'm not seeing this person. The, the tightening of Bollinger Bands usually precedes a market pump, but I'm not seeing that right here. So I think that uh, unless they're looking at another time frame, uh, I don't know what they're not what they're they're saying. So anyway, I'm not sure these people know what they're talking about. Bollinger Bands hit level that saw Bitcoin price squeeze. I, I don't know. Show it. Let's see what they're saying. And they're not even showing it on there. So Bollinger Bands reach February breakout zone. Let's see. Wait, they might be problem is the problem is they're using the wrong standard deviations. And I can show you right here. You see, see to use Bollinger Bands correctly with crypto, we discovered use a, we use three standard deviations, not two. Because you see how the price is going out above, outside of the price action? That makes it ineffective. If you change the Bollinger Bands from two standard deviations to three, then it becomes a very telling um, uh, take profit uh, indicator. So here we've programmed it in hours. If the Bollinger Bands gets above the third standard deviation Bollinger, all right, and you can see this red vertical line. It did. It closed above it. In this case, it went sideways, sideways, sideways. Often, though, it will mark a sell area to take profits on coins. So right here, a sideways and drop. On the right up here, uh, it dropped. And up here, sideways. So it's a good place to take some money off the table, and uh, especially on the altcoins. So that's why we use this. And uh, on the lower edge, if it touches the lower green Bollinger Band on the Bollinger Band Pro, let me turn off the EMA ribbon for a minute. Uh, that's a buy signal. As my uh, good friend Steve Nissen taught me, when it usually hits one extreme, it will usually continue down to the other extreme, uh, you know, except in a rampant bull market. So, but we did see it come back down here and on the lower Bollinger Band, and then it did drop further. But uh, more more often than not, we're using it on a daily time frame uh, for taking profits, especially on altcoins and the bigger altcoins. So anyway, I'll go back to the news here. Um, I don't. I think this uh, the Bollinger Band width is interesting. So typically, it does bottom out down in this region. So we can look at that too if we want. 
Bitcoin price break above 66K. Has Bitcoin flipped bullish again? Not yet, not yet. So right in here, we did get above it yesterday up to 67K. We're still in a downtrend, you guys. And uh, I'll redraw this uh, trend channel. But, um, and again, I like this for bull flag reasons. The flagpole here on a uh, bull flag breakout puts us up upwards of around 100K. We'll look at that in more detail tomorrow. And um, uh, let's just go see what else this person says here. I don't think we need to unpack this. Uh, traditional, this is important here. Basically, tensions have eased based on the Middle East conflict. You know, what's a couple of missiles among friends? Just kidding. Uh, they're not friends at all. But fortunately, it hasn't escalated further, which is not what we want. And uh, But it did get us back down into fear, which is what we want to see on the fear and greed index. Maybe we should pull that up and just see what that looks like fear and greed index on uh now for a while there this was broken on the alternative alternative.me site so let's see if they fixed it maybe we can otherwise pull up a different one i don't know this doesn't seem right are we back into greed you guys i guess we could have been but uh i don't know i haven't been looking at it lately but i've been hearing that it's sort of broke and uh, let's see, we'll continue to unpack this, but uh, association higher lows into the resistance pattern, RSI, et cetera. Okay, we'll look at some more indicators here in a minute. Let's see, on the fear and greed indexed, yeah, so investor place, now that's gonna be on um, the stock market. Let me just see what well, CoinStats is reporting it as. And let's see, it did, it did, uh, well, last week, it's, I don't know. Here, let me look. This is a pretty good one. I haven't looked at this one before. This is over on uh, Coin Stats here. So we have a map of the Fear and Greed Index. So it went from extreme greed. Now we're kind of back into, uh, you know, 71, still in greed, but uh, not, not back into the extreme greed cycle here. So uh, today, greed. Yesterday, greed. Last week, greed. A uh, bunch of greedy bastards out there, you guys are. Uh, but anyway, would have liked to see us. I I could have sworn we were back down on the fear uh, last week, but uh, at any rate, maybe not. What we don't want to see is the uh, extreme on that uh, extreme greed, because then usually we sell off, uh, because that's where all the highly leveraged traders get in, right? So that's what happens, and what happens from there is they start liquidating traders, like we can see over on these um, on this map here. Even though the markets are sideways, twenty four hour wrecked, uh, hundred million, pretty even, fifty five million logs, fifty six million on the short side. Uh, you know, um, I'm surprised to see that, but uh, that's because a lot of these degenerates are going. 50x long, 100x long, uh, and I mean that affectionately. Um, that's, like I, you know, I, I'm a trader at heart, so I don't. If you know what you're doing, and you're playing with a, a low amount of money and low margin, and and you want to gamble a little bit, why not? Um, but just don't go out there with your uh, life savings at 20x margin in there, because you're trading against the best traders in the world, and they they uh, exchanges often uh, are targeting your accounts and they will go after your big bags and try to liquidate you. That's part of their business model. Don't kid yourself. Uh, buy bit. Yes. Uh, bit get um, all of those. Ask me how I know. Um, unpeel the onion too far. You won't like what you see. Swing trading is where we have our edge. That's why it's mostly what we do. All right. Uh, we won't get into MRV score and on-chain metrics. This is going to make your head hurt. And basically, Bitcoin needs to reclaim 69 to confirm breakout. I think that's a bit high. I don't think, I think we 67K, we're good. And as long as a closing basis, uh, make sure that is a closing basis. So let's jump over here and take a look on the daily time frame. Look, I'm up in this 67, 68K region. That We were back above the 28, uh, 21 day and the 50 day EMA. That's what I want to see more over. And also these EMEA ribbons are looking strong here. I just, uh, I'm going to set an alert breaking out of the trend channel. To me, that is more important. I mean, ideally over 670 K, those big round numbers are meaningful, but um, you know, uh, I just typically we'd break out of that and retest and then go much higher. And of course the safest place is right up here above the old all time high. And then we're off to the races and into a price discovery zone. So the correct way to trade, I would be the, the greater risk is not to be in this market at all. So I would be at least 25% allocated and then be buying into strength as we go higher, saving some in case we dip, in case we go back and retest that $60,000 range. You know, we could even come down to this 58K region. 
Um, I, you know, I think that more than likely 60 K holds, we have that midpoint of this vector candle here, which is uh, often does retest. And so there's reasons for that. I won't go into, we talk about it in our, some other classes, but what I've all often seen is the midpoint of these big candles where the market makers are repricing and moving uh, the price action into a new zone. Now we already technically have retested it. So we've come back in there already. So you know, it's not really a valid zone where we have not, that wasn't the right one actually, it was this one down here. So we did retest that already. So certainly we could go back up again, although we could, these are levels, uh, these big green buy blocks. This is our money flow on our ERI Pro indicator. And uh, I have a theory, we haven't proven it yet, but uh, that, that we won't go below those. What I was looking at is we, in the past, we have not gone below those on a weekly time frame. So here and here, uh, that would tell me prior to this, we you know we wouldn't go back below, see how it held. So I'm gonna, I think we're, I think that 55, 58k uh, will hold, and we won't go below that until proven otherwise. So that's good to keep an eye on that. Let's see here, what else can we look at? I've got maybe too much on the charts. We'll put away the EMA ribbon, and I'll hide that Bollinger band for now. And uh, we'll put the order blocks back on. The problem is we're kind of wedged sandwiched between buy order blocks and sell order blocks. We need to clear this 68K level. That would clear all these sell orders that are lining up and keeping price sort of uh, in, in uh, entrenched, entombed where it is right now. All right, uh, what else do we look at, you guys? So uh, essentially here, and I think I do have the trade checklist on, so we'll come back to this. And if you want to download that, uh, you guys can do that here. I'm going to tell you about a free training, by the way. Um, if you're watching this, go ahead and register. Go to moonstream.io slash free. We're doing a live training this Thursday night. That will be, uh, that'll be April 25th at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern. And essentially, um, that's in two days. We're going to be uh, on with my partner, Mike. We're going to be doing some analysis and look at some charts. We're going to reveal uh, what we're seeing in the markets. And uh, remember, we're going to talk about, um, you know, one of our, our newsletter service that called, had a very uh, interesting coin pick in February that went up 6X, you guys. Uh, and then it's pulled back. It's pulled back to a, a strong support zone. Uh, those of you who are here live know what I'm talking about. Uh, it's, it's getting ready for another run, and, and we think it has 100x potential. So uh, we're going to show that. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about our the strongest sectors we see in crypto for this bull run. So you want to be on that webinar, just go to uh, register here at moonstream.io slash free, and uh, you can get signed up. I'll drop that uh, in the chat here, and, um, and you guys uh, can join us for that. All right, um, back to, let's see what else we have here. We've got our, our checklist. Let me, let me, we'll pull up some coins here a little bit. I think Bitcoin, uh, we've already discussed all the news that's relevant here. Let me just check. And Ether ETFs unlikely to be approved in May. I think that we've already, I've already suggested that. I think it will happen, but it will, uh, it will happen later. So we won't give up on that. Let's just see, checking crypto panic here. Not much happening here. Something about Argentina. And um, but nothing really major. There's one article I did pull up here, uh, and I thought I pulled up on Coin uh, Crypto Panic. Maybe we already talked about. It. I think it was that El Salvador story. Groundbreaking project in Finland uses Bitcoin mining to heat homes. There you go, there you go. You know, it might not be might not be good for the igloo, but um, uh, otherwise, heat your homes. Why not? A uh, new project in Finland using Bitcoin mining to heat their homes in Finland. All right, I like that idea. There you go. There's some interesting proactive thinking and I'm trying to turn on my highlighter here, you guys. Sorry for that. Uh, and there you go. Energy to heat homes, hash labs, mining, Bitcoin mining, infrastructure firm, Pioneer Ground, big project, heat generates design mining devices. All right, cool. Uh, project exploits, hydro cooled. What's minor? ASIC. Now, an ASIC. In case you don't know that, you guys, uh, go to the Bitcoin conference if you get a chance. It's going to, by the way, it's going to be in Nashville this summer, I think June, July. Uh, Mike and I will be there. Uh, you know, if you're watching this, uh, you know, take some of your crypto profits and do yourself a favor. Go to the Bitcoin conference. It's nothing like it. You get to see some of these experts. Uh, you get to see Michael Saylor and uh, Cynthia Loomis and really smart people talking about what's happening 
uh, in Bitcoin and just the camaraderie. It's a lot of fun. And uh, it's going to be uh, uh, in Nashville. The reason I mentioned that is uh, they have a they have a sponsor floor and all kinds of cool things from knickknacks, but they also have uh, the section for the the miners. Now the ASIC miners they're like they're like the size of a meat locker now. It's like a small tractor trailer. That's how big they are. You can't mine Bitcoin anymore with your laptop and your spare computer. They are massive. And they're very expensive, especially now. I, and they keep getting bigger, especially after the halving. Uh, so if any of you are going, by the way, uh, drop a chat down there and we'll have to team up. Uh, maybe I'll do a private uh, dinner and a small like session. And uh, I'd love to meet more of you guys in person. Uh, so far, Alex, I think you're the only one I've met one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. Uh, Alex says the degen trader is in every one of us. Yeah, I, you know, it's, uh, it, it does lie down beneath uh, or else we wouldn't be here. Uh, district heating system network insulated pipes connects this hot water source to multiple buildings to provide them with heating and so where are they getting the the hot water are they heating it with the, the miner obviously let's see most advanced clusters of district heating systems uh i don't i don't know but um this is pretty interesting hot water flows through underground pipes individual buildings connected to the system very innovative you guys uh i like this uh so go finland New renewable energy sources moving away from environmentally damaging means. I mean, that's even better than uh, the oil refining because, you know, oil still, you know, we're pulling it out of the, the earth. And, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's a messy business. So and then we pollute by uh, driving our cars around and uh, private jets and all those things. So um, at any rate, and that's kind of what they're talking about. Your consumption by energy source. Uh, and burning stuff. Anyway, um, Bitcoin mining energy could balance, reduce having rewards. I think we're getting into the bit of the weeds here, you guys. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? I think that about covers it. Let's jump out and back over to the charts and see what's moving. I believe that's all I wanted to show you. We, uh, I'll pull up the, the iBit chart real quick. I'll do that real quick. And um, so Let's see, load that layout. Just give us a bit of a look at the IBIT ETF daily. And actually it's uh, more of a four hour chart that we're normally looking at it because it can give us some clues. It can give us clues on what's happening. And uh, if you have first time seeing this, we, we've we been watching this. I've been watching this all the way over here on the four hour chart, right where they announced the IBIT had a bit of sell off and then had a nice cup and handle pattern, broke out above the handle at this green arrow. And then, of course, we saw this huge run up here, consolidated a bit. And our buy blocks also giving us signs of strength, buy block here, buy block there. And uh, we've been consolidating, selling off a bit on the IBIT here, have a sell block up above, a small buy block here on the four hour, not really giving us a lot of clues. It's a little bit overbought here too, but that's fine. It can stay there for a while. Let's look at a longer time frame, see if it gives us any more clues. Back above the 21 and 50 day EMA, that's good. Have some room to go. Have a key and a bell also on our trend indicator. That's a good sign normally. And uh, let's just go to the daily and see. So we have the TSI going green. I like that, that it is good on the daily time frame. And let's see if our ERI gives us any inclination. So we had an ERI back here. TSI is green. If we get the signal line to go green, again, you get these indicators as a member in M3, active trader. Otherwise, it's $9.97 a year, $4.97 for six months. Um, I've been trading 25 years. These are the best indicators that I've ever used. That's why we've developed them. And if you don't have them, you are at a disadvantage. Uh, you can get them directly if you just want to do those. Go to Crypto Mastery dot org right there and you can get uh, those and learn more about these uh, for a limited time we've got limited pricing on that for that uh, 497 get a month free uh, here's this eri and tsi together are excellent at, at uh, calling major market tops and bottoms um, love the dynamic average true range gives you a dynamic stop loss so if you're long here these entry zones are where you'd go long and then the exit is either a place to go short or to uh, close your long all right use it as a stop loss and uh, so you get seven indicators in there with that service and uh, so we're going to switch over here to kind of doing some training on these indicators so again you can get those at cryptomastery.org and for 497 so it's 97 a month but if you do six months, instead of six hundred dollars, it's five hundred. You get a month free. Pretty good deal. Pretty good deal. And uh, and then we just released some pro indicators. We'll tell you about. But this is where you'd want to start. 
to start learning these indicators. So with that, uh, let's hop over again and uh, take a look at, uh, let's take a look at Ethereum, see if we're seeing any signals. You know, again, we have that sell order block here. These are part of our pro indicators uh, and that big sell order block there. So let me turn that off and we'll just see, do we have anything? Any, we're, we're really waiting for uh, the average true range to start to go green, right? And uh, and that'll be a great clue because, you know, caught it back in this area, great trade. We were in earlier on the TSI trend strength indicator going above 20, turning green. We do have that here. So it's kind of mixed signals. Uh, I would say, uh, let's see how this progresses. And uh, where's that other chart that I had? Let's, I thought I had two charts up here. Um, just a quick look over at coins that are moving, by the way. Cash Networks is up 35%. And uh, we'll come back and look at that. Uh, Pepe Cohen, guys, I, I put it out yesterday. Pepe is up 20%, I said, in the M3 Active Trader chat. So if you're not in M3, you're missing out. I uh, Let me just pull that up here because I said that, uh, hey, guys, because I had my alerts went off. And the indicators were signaling that, hey, may have a breakout on uh, Pepe Coin. So uh, let's just see here. And where is that here? That's, of course, the uh, the one that uh, image is not loading here. By the way, we're very active in the M M3 Active Trader, so you could, uh, a lot of uh, chit-chat in there. I'm in there giving daily alpha every day, uh, giving trade alerts. And we talked about NIR. I gave a buyer alert on NIR yesterday. We'll take a look at that. Fetchcoin was looking good. Uh, and where's Pepe? I know I talked about it. And so, and a lot, very active uh, in there. So um, I'm not sure where, where that went, but we'll pull it up on the chart. And you guys that are in the class, here we go. Pepe, possible breakout. Look at that. So called it yesterday. What's Pepe doing today? It's up 20%. Uh, let's see. And you can find that. Uh, yeah, look at that beautiful chart. Um, I'll turn off the ATR. Uh, once that goes green, though, that'll be great, won't it? So essentially, ERI giving a nice buy block on the ERI. Okay, pro version, and the TSI is, of course, green. Turning that off, nice touch. Look at that, how the ERI, uh, sorry, the 21-day has just bounced off of the 50-day. You can see that more clearly on the EMA ribbon, but you really don't need those, right? So we have that nice push-off, nice um, candle yesterday, continuing higher, and we're, we are getting, all right, you guys see it? What do you see here? I see a big old bull flag. Um, Pep Bitcoin, I think, looks good for further upside. Because, again, when these when these flag poles break, or uh, when the flag uh, actually breaks, I would draw it here to here as the flag pole. So flag pole and flag. And then the measured move on that, if we clone this right here, okay, the measured move on that, oops, is it's going to be up here, up about, I won't even name that price, but from here, you guys, where could this go? This thing is ripe for a big old pump higher. And if Pepe runs, Breitcoin, I think, probably will run. Now, why this thing is not going to let me use the tool I need because it doesn't like when I do that. I have to drag and hold it. This is a 5X from here, you guys, uh, potentially 5X, 4X at least, okay? Uh, let me redraw that. Let's see. These have been very temperamental, these tools lately. Uh, all right, come on. Click on that. Click on that. Resize it. 450, and a, four and a half X from here on Pepe coin. I, I like this. I like this a lot. And of course, you would want to put it on right at the top, price discovery zone right above here. Double To double down on that would make a lot of sense. You know, it kills me because I, you know, when you start doubting yourself, you're like, I don't know. But I was watching Pet Bitcoin down in here and I had an alert when it broke out on this range. And I'm like, I don't know. This thing has already run so far back in the last run. And I missed, I, we missed this whole run up here. God, come on now. Trading view, do better, you guys. Clicked on it and give me the tool I need. All right, so there we go. Bull flag, uh, possible breakout. And uh, let's take a look at near protocol. Well, first of all, what are some other clues that we had? Again, the ERI uh, did not signal the ERI on the arrow, but that's why we also look at the oscillator version. Didn't quite nail it, but the TSI did get it right. And uh, we're waiting on the ATR to start to also go green. I think we're just getting started on that. And uh, we could also add our trend indicator. So what I'll do on this is I'll go up to my templates and I'm going to add in the daily, the daily default. Let's see, I've got these top crypto mastery indicators. So let me load those in here. So with that, what have I done? 
uh, I've loaded the uh, ERI there and we've got the oscillator version and a TSI, the signal line, also our third one, we call it the four horsemen. So when we get an ERI TSI and a signal line also going green, it's another confirmation, you guys. This looking so good. Pepe, very oversold on this signal. Uh, guys, this uh, this is looking better and better. Uh, our trend indicator, where is that? Uh, not that one. It's probably right here. Where's the trend indicator? It's not showing me what I want there, so I'll have to re-add it. So I'll pop that off. And pop that off. Our volatility index, uh, much better on the shorter time frames. Let me just pull up that trend indicator because that's our longer term. And when we get the key in the bell, we know that that is what we are looking for. Okay, beautiful. Look at this on Pepe. Okay, guys, we're getting a key in a bell. We might have the four horsemen here. And let me see. I'll turn off the vol index. So we have we didn't get the, the ERI there. So we have kind of, you know, if we get three of these, though, it's still worth doing the trade. So what do we have? We have TSI green above 20. We have a signal line green. We have a key and a bell. Let's hop over to our trade success checklist. Perfect opportunity to do that. So this time, it's unusual that we don't have an ERI first. So we're not going to click that. However, we do have the TSI green above the 20 line. Just showed you that. We have the signal line turned from red to green. We do have that. And we do have the trend indicator showing a bell and above the green midline. So what does that give us? It gives us a trend score of 3 out of 21. There's something you must be wrong here. It should give us a 4. I must have a bearish uh, signal checked. So I just did a hard refresh on this. So let's do this one more time. And uh, we've got a score of 4 out of 21, right? So anything over a 2, take the trade. And as the score increases, you can add to the trade. Other signals that might give us a reason to add to that trade are other standard signals like bullish engulfing candles. Those always help. Now let's hop over and just see does Pepe coin. I'll turn off the ATR here because uh, we don't have that. We want the radar on, of course. Our radar is, it's green in the short term. So uh, longer term, not quite yet, but um, that's all right. Let's see, where's the ATR? It won't let me turn it off for some reason. It's, uh, no, it's not on here. It's because the vol index is on there. I'll turn that off. So I'll get the candles back at the way we want them. All right, you guys, stay with me. This is the good stuff. So we're breaking out bull flag. I guess bull flag should be added to uh, one of these setups, but we are above the 21 and 50 day EMA. So that is also good. Let's jump over to the trader success checklist. Where did it go? Here it is, you guys. Uh, okay, here is the price above the 21 and 50 day. Now we have a, a trend, a trader success score, a trade success score of five out of 21. Certainly want to be in this trade. I think Pepe's a go. Is there a bullish engulfing candle pattern? Um, we don't have that. Um, you know, we sometimes will consider that on a weekly time frame. This now, this pattern on the weekly is called a three inside up. And if we close Pepe closes here on a weekly time frame, I think Pepe's closing up to be a very nice trade here. Uh, and so you know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put on the three inside up when we get down to it. Is it above a rising support trend line? Uh, if we go back to the daily. It, uh, it would qualify for that. I'll use this as the measured move. There's a trend line right there. Uh, okay, so we'd say yes on that. So, you know, look, this is looking pretty good. Is it breaking above resistance on Pepe coin? It is breaking above resistance because if we draw this as trend line resistance, it's breaking back above it. See that? Okay, you get the idea. Let's see. So this pet Bitcoin's looking pretty good, you guys. Don't bet the farm. What we're up to is seven out of twenty-one, and it's actually eight. Uh, is it at support EMA trend line? And it's above that, so we we could still. I I this was specifically for when it sits right on there. So let's keep going though. Is the vol index above the twenty level? That's not really relevant on this one. Is there a rocket? No, but there is. Where is it? Uh, the three inside up is down below here. Buy blocks, we don't have buy blocks. We don't have bouncing off the lower Bollinger Band, but we do have the three inside up. The three inside up is when you have three candles, uh, a down candle and then two candles inside, but breaking above that. So collectively, they're, they're, they're sort of engulfing that one. So we do have that. So now we have a trade success score of eight out of 21. Looks pretty good. Uh, radar is not green on all time frames, but that's okay. We don't need to have all of these. Certainly again, over two and three uh, as a good trade. 
And as as more of these go green, we can deploy more capital into the trade, specifically the average true range, currently not showing entry, but uh, certainly could in the near future. And uh, these are all part of those indicators, the Crypto Mastery indicators that uh, you can sign up for at CryptoMastery.org, or you get free as part of the M3 Active Trader class, which is tomorrow at noon. Many of you are here. Uh, they're part of M3 Active Trader and uh, or get to join this class live as well. And uh, you guys, um, uh, it's uh, kind of test. It's a very good class. Yeah. So um, anyway, we go into more detail. We'll look at uh, total market cap. We look at the IBIT, we'll look at the DXY and uh, all that tomorrow's class. So if you like what you're seeing today and you're not already signed up, uh, you need to be an M3 really to have an edge in this market. But back to the the training here. So what do we have? It, again, the, the ATR... On, let's look at the weekly time frame. Not enough data, but um, as soon as we go green on the uh, the daily ATR, when we get the entry point, so pretty soon this is going to flip into entry. Okay, and uh, and I'm not trying to pitch Pepe Coin, by the way. This is this is we're training on how to use the indicators. We're going to look at some other ones. We're going to look at near next. And uh, if you guys have any coins you want to look at, uh, let me know. And uh, we didn't live stream today, but uh, hopefully we will be doing that next week. So do you guys get it here? And we have more price above long-term support. You know, uh, is price breaking out of a downward trending channel? Here we go. This is the equivalent of that bull flag. So yes, see that pattern here? We are breaking out of a downward trending channel, which is this. Let me turn off the ATR and I have it on here three times for some reason. Uh, and so that you guys can see it. Because once you see it, you can't unsee it, right? So downtrending trend channel, we uh, we that, that's that's been very useful for us in this bull run, and one of the things we should have been doing more in the uh, last bull run. Uh, the other thing too, uh, as I've noted lately, is this fire ladder, this this uh, fireman's ladder indicator or not indicator, but chart setup. When we start seeing this, it almost looks like a ladder that would hook on, kind of like the cable guy. If you ever <laughs> had the, the, the Comcast guy here recently, you would get that ladder, which is sort of steep, you know, and then it has the hooks on the end where they hook it over the edge of the wires when the cable guy's outside or the fireman's leaning up against the building. Yeah, usually uh, that, doesn't, that, that doesn't last, right? So this is where, you know, use your own analogy here, but um, this usually sells off. And uh, but we're right in this trajectory again, uh, Pepe guys. Um, if you're watching this, I, I would get some Pepe after this. I'm gonna go and throw in down, throw down on some Pepe. I have a little bit, by the way. Uh, hey, you know what? I, we don't care. We'll trade goats and sheep if we think that the, the chart looks good and it can go up enough. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, the ability to do that, uh, and uh, it's a joke. But you get the idea. Uh, we are agnostic. I might even, I might even on a rainy day if the chart looked good enough, trade. Doge and dare I say Shibu, you know, I, I don't follow it. Uh, they have zero utility, but they're gateway coins. And uh, if you guys want, we'll look at it. I don't know. Again, if it looks good, we'll do it. Uh, I want to finish this example just to see how have we gone through all this. Now, certainly there are the equivalent on the bearish side. So if you're shorting, you can use this checklist so for bearish trades. And if you start checking these off, it's going to reduce the trade success. So if we z we're at zero and we checked that off, see how it just dropped that score. So a really cool interactive uh, worksheet. Again, you can get this for free. Go over to um, moonstream.io. It's down at the bottom. You sign up, give us your email. We'll send this to you. And, uh, and, and while you're there, sign up for getting notified for these free classes every week. And again, we go into much more detail tomorrow in the M3 Active Trader class. Uh, this is uh, primarily for news and training on the indicators for the crypto mastery indicators. Uh, by the way, uh, what do you guys think? I want to survey those of you that are here live. I'm thinking of renaming the crypto mastery indicators to, to the M3 uh, Crypto Navigator because it's sort of more brand um, consistent. And the reason for that is as years and years ago, some of you know, I had started the Options University and we taught tens of thousands of traders all over the world how to trade options and Forex. And our most successful program was called uh, called uh, Forex Mastery. And um, and, and we, we came up on that by surveying the audience, by the way. I haven't shared this story in a long time, but we had four partners. We all had our own name of the product and we all thought that our name of the product was the best name of the product. And we are all certain that uh, 
ours was the best. And they were fair, all fairly terrible, uh, like 4X Punisher, 4X Dominator. But we surveyed everybody on our email list and we threw in the number five option was 4X Mastery. Well, 76% of people liked 4X Mastery and in retrospect, great name. Hence the name Crypto Mastery. Uh, how, and we created a product called um, Crypto Forex uh, Mastery and the the, the M3 uh, Forex Navigator because it just completely made it up. But um, in, while I do like Crypto Mastery, uh, M3 is is sort of the, is the name of this training that we do M3 Crypto. So M3 Crypto Navigator. Let me know in the chat what you guys think. I would appreciate it. And uh, yeah, Leslie says I like the word navigator, right? It's just a little, little bit less um, uh, salesy. I don't know. Crypto Mastery is a little corny, I guess. But uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, so far, a whopping one of you has responded. Thank you for that. So, all right, we'll keep going. Uh, what I wanted to get back to, and the reason that you're here is to serve some more alpha here. So Pet Bitcoin, looking good. And uh, why don't we jump to something else? You know, I, I, I'm not going to go shorter turn time frame on these here. We'll do that in tomorrow's class. And we've already covered all this. I think you've covered everything. So let's look at near protocol. Because why? Because it's one of the top movers on the Coinbase top movers list. Uh, near had a nice candle yesterday. So what do you guys see here? Anybody? Anybody see what we just showed on the last? We're starting to see more of these, you know, right? So the parallel channel becomes that bull flag. Anyone get it? Nobody got it. All right. So what is that? Bull flag. Okay. So we take the flagpole and we draw it up like that. Now, this one I can already tell is going to have quite a lot of upside, you guys. So this is looking good. It's breaking out of there, the measured move on that. I measure it from the bottom of the flag. You can do it however you want, but this is played out more often than not than me. Goes up to $17, uh, potentially, uh, well above the old high. The cool thing about Near is that, you know, we were trading it back when it broke above the here at the uh, all-time high price discovery. So it's back into price discovery zone. And, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm not trying to draw lines all over the place. Uh, so basically, that could put us all the way up here, which would be from current price levels. Uh, come on, you guys. Uh, it would be 20, 120, you know, 126 X. Not, not bad. Beats a sharp stick in the eye. Okay. Uh, so there you go. Uh, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Perry. Uh, all right. We're two to one on, on indicators. Oh, wait a minute. Well, now you're throwing me for loop. We have three three votes on this. So one of you says like Navigator. One of you likes M3 Crypto Mastery. Uh, okay. And then, uh, Rick, I still like the current name Mastery. Okay. Uh, clear as mud. Well, unless I have a clear winner, we won't change anything. Uh, and uh, and so maybe. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Stay with me. So here's near protocol. And uh, let's look at our other indicators here. I'll pull up the ERI and the, uh, the radar is on. ERI um, did get an, an ERI here and uh, TSI going green. Guys, we have the four kings here on this. And as you know, the four kings are our strongest set of indicators with the, the regular uh, indicators here. We could overlay some of the pro indicators next, which we can. Um, but I do like this. So near protocol also looking strong. It's an AI coin. And uh, those of you who know, uh, we've got uh, a watch list in the AI sector. Those of you who are in Retire Rich and uh, also M3, we do look at those. But what do we have? We have ERI, yes. Back here, the TSI, the trend strength indicator, went green here. So that's where you would have been buying into this position. And uh, had you been watching it and uh, using that trend uh, trader success checklist, right? You can just eyeball these things now. Say so it got back above the 21 and 50 day EMAs. If we put on the ribbon, we would have seen these consolidated, consolidating there. Uh, we had a little mini rocket almost here with this uh, this candle. Uh, but uh, TSI green, signal going green. These are all different algorithms. And so when they more of them align, it's more powerful. And then our trend indicator, the key 
shows when there's a new trend and we want to see this green, the green center line and a nice slope, like a 45 degree angle slope. And then the bell is the buy. The key says, hey, wait a minute, we might be having a new trend here to the upside and the bell is our confirmation. So as of today, we want to make sure I would I would wait as to the end of today. Uh, we have we have seen end of day sell offs that could negate the bell. But it, if at 801 tonight Eastern, there is a bell here near protocol is a buy uh, or an add to the position. Um, I would have some near right now. And so putting a buy signal uh, on this uh, is useful. And I like that as a trade. Uh, once the ATR goes green. Now, remember, you guys, um, you guys can set alerts on all of these indicators. And I do recommend that you do that. So I'll left click, get the little dots on there. And then we'll right click, go to settings. I'm sorry, go to add alert. You can do it this way. And what we want to do here is when we go to buy, see the little rocket? That means when it turns to buy. And the opposite would be the red down uh, triangle. So we want to go buy and essentially uh, buy ATR uh, trailing stop. Okay, so that would be if you're short. But basically, I am saying buy long. Okay, so you can change those messages. And I do recommend you do that. Uh, that's on the daily time frame, but uh, hey, th this looks pretty good. Pretty good there. All right, what else do we have? Um, and again, we're pulling this uh, from the uh, hot movers, the top movers on the Coinbase list. And we can look at gainers. You can look at all kinds of things. This is a good place if you're an active trader, uh, you know, you can pull these things up and, and get some ideas. Most transactions, most daily active addresses, 52 week high, 52 week low. All-time high, I mean, all-time highs. Okay, so a cash is looking at all-time high. Good to know. Uh, I mean, this is, um, it's a little bit hard to buy for most of us in the U.S., but let's pull it up on the super charts. And, okay, well, it, it, it peaked and it sold off, but we are getting the ATR on that. And so that's interesting. ATR, as you can find it on crypto. What do we have here? We've gone entry zone on the dynamic ATR, even though it sold off quite a bit. Uh, we are uh, in a kind of, you know, a TSI signal. The trade was to get in a couple days ago when you got the bell and the four kings lined up. We missed that. But again, uh, what you can do and what I do recommend is when you have the indicators, just go in on all of your uh, favorite coins here and go up and set alerts on these things. Because again, you could set alert on the next bell on near. Uh, you could say, okay, daily trend new bell buy. Okay. And that's, you know, you can also do question marks. So you go check it out. And uh, you can do it once per bar close every time it happens. You can play around with all of these. All right. So I'm going to set that. So the next time there's a bull uh, bell, a bull bell on uh, a cash, I'll get an alert on this. So uh, anyway, but beautiful. Getting a new entry zone on that. Um, okay. Thank you, Rick. Good call. Let's pull up our Bollinger Band Pro. And now I'll show you uh, the older version. Yeah. Good read on that. So um, basically what happened is now the old version of the Bollinger Band, uh, it looks with these like this with these blue arrows. We have a pro version. So there's two ways you can do this. You can change the settings on your standard Bollinger Band and go under the inputs and change it from the standard deviation of two to three. It comes set as two by default, but it, it doesn't, it's useless because it, it frequently gets above the upper Bollinger Band. Change it to three, it'll change your life. Uh, this is excellent for take profit signals like see here, here, and here. Um, let me pull up our version of it because we've added some things. And those of you that have the pro indicators can see they all show up here with this little M signal, the rocket, the crypto screener, the ERI Pro. Uh, I'll turn on the crypto screener here in a minute. Uh, that's kind of cool here. Uh, ERI Pro Trend Pro, uh, the TSI order block detector, we have that. And the RSI Pro, of course, the Bollinger Bands. And I think that's enough for now. I don't want to confuse everybody. When you do add the Bollinger Band indicator, over to there, you drag it up to the top. You have to go over here, right click, uh, merge all scales into one on the right. Okay, so there we have it. So let me turn off the uh, the scanner there. That's in kind of beta. Uh, but look at that. I'll turn. I'll come back to that. The only one that's all green though is near near protocol, <clears throat> confirming that we like that trade 
So uh, turning these things off, um, the RSI Pro is so good. Look at that. We When it aligns, I have to get that added uh, to the uh, trader success checklist because that has given us some great signals, okay? And with that in mind, I'm going to do a, a screenshot and do that at the uh, at the soonest possible time. So this will be part of the uh, ERI Pro uh, with those green circles down at the bottom because they, they really do often signal that low point. And um, also one of the things we need to look at is the bullish divergence on these. So <clears throat> see these down here, the green circles? That's bullish divergence, uh, the, the green lines showing that it was about to go higher. The green circles showing a bottom similarly the uh, upper ones there on red showing tops and bearish divergence. Okay, so let me just uh, get that out of the way, you guys. So anyway, um, but that looks, that looks interesting. The sell-off, though, as Rick was pointing out, nicely done, is, yeah, it got above and closed above the upper Bollinger Band for the day. Uh, well, <clears throat> okay, what this means is the current price is above the Bollinger Band. And if you can see how when the wick got all the way up here, it's sold off. This happens so often, you guys. You have to have this indicator. See over here on near, it got up red, vertical red lines, sold off. Over here, sold off. And uh, you can also see it happen even when it touches that upper. Up here, I didn't get the vertical line because it, it, it was contained um, within it. But when it touched, even with a touch point, sold off. So um, it's such a powerful way to take profits. Uh, where do we go from here? I think it probably still goes higher on a pullback, uh, which would we, we would probably see toward the end of the day. And uh, so beautiful chart. Look at that on uh, near protocol. Anything you guys want to look at here, let me know. I'll pull over this uh, chat here and open this up here a bit. So uh, let's see. Uh, can you get more info on the Bitcoin conference? Yeah, just go to Bitcoin.org. I mean, uh, that is a, a GTS question. Uh, Google that, and um, <clears throat> let's just see Bitcoin uh, conference 2024, and there you go. comes right up on the old Google machine. So here we go. In Nashville, July 25th to 27th, I will be there. Uh, Mike will be there, and may have some other students there. I would love to. Uh, you can still get early bird tickets. I don't get anything from that. Just helping to spread the word. Nashville's a super fun city and without the uh, obnoxious uh, blazing heat of Miami. Uh, I love Miami, but not in July <laughs> and uh, not even in uh, May uh, sometimes. So, um, Marissa, you can find out more there at the Bitcoin conference, b b.tc. Okay, and then I'll even drop it in here for you. Um, I highly recommend you go. It's a lot of fun, um, a little overwhelming, but the speakers are great. And it's just immersion. And you will leave there with greater conviction than ever that you are in the right place. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we're just getting caught up on some chat. Uh, let's see. One. Yeah. 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 Alex says, I'll say this. You never know the possibilities that lay ahead when you meet one on one with someone in the industry. Uh, we'll be there, but you never know who you'll bump into at the Bitcoin conference. And uh, in fact, last year we were doing a quick interview with Max Wright. Many of you know Max Wright. Uh, he's a friend of the channel, a uh, friend of uh, ours, by the way. Uh, and uh, he was there and uh, all along with um, uh, one of his frequently, frequently interviewed guests, uh, Alex, or sorry, um, uh, what's his name? Villa Verde is his last name. I, I'm blanking out. I think it's uh, Juan, Juan Villa Verde, really smart cycle trader. We did a little private interview in one of the uh, rooms there. And uh, on the way, or while they were waiting for me, uh, Michael Saylor walked by. So that would have been cool to uh, to chat one on one and get a picture with Michael. Anyway, um, definitely check that out. So let us know. I'd love to get together, do a dinner, get a maybe get a mastermind, a one day mastermind, and uh, trading session, something like that, and uh, just kind of share what everyone's learning. So Perry saying, uh, where is there a particular sector breaking out DGENs and means AIs? Uh, you know, you can. Um, you, let's see, you can usually find out of where that are, where that are, <laughs> uh, where that is, let's see, market cap ideas, news overview coins. And, uh, you can, as far as breaking out, you can find the best coins on coin market cap. We're going to release, by the way, on the webinar, one of our students. So those of you, you know, uh, those of you that know Matt, remember Matt Skinner put together a great, um, 
Uh, Matt, if you're watching, cheers. Thanks for that. Sorry, I haven't gotten back to you. Just been slammed. A, uh, a sector by sector, top coins in each sector. We're going to give that away. And uh, for those of you, stick around till the end of the webinar Thursday. Uh, if you're an M3, we'll get that to you. Don't worry. Um, what was I saying here on the uh, movers? Um, I don't know of a sector movers area. We have our own watch lists. And um, if I were to hop over into here, this looks different than it normally does. So it must be I made a change. Um, AI coins. Yeah, I've got my own watch list on all these. Anything going in the uh, AI coin sector? We've got Akash, of course. We were just looking at that and sold off. Uh, you know, AIs have been hot. Keep an eye on AI coins you know, for bounces. I don't see anything particularly strong yet. And, um, you know, those of you who know what, uh, uh, we'll talk about uh, rain tomorrow. I, I, I'm going to talk about that. Uh, that's not, a, I'm not going to talk about that in a free class, but uh, that alone is worth coming into the M3 class tomorrow. Uh, of course, let's look at our crypto mastery class. Of course, uh, you know, we were watching some of these recently. Let me turn off the ATR, but you guys can see that dynamic ATR is so good at catching these movements when it goes entry, boom, boom, boom. And it's good for using as a dynamic stop loss. And as I showed in the last one, you can also set an alert on this to where it changes to the red dot and say, all right, this is going to be my stop. Okay. And you can might say to yourself, sell half because you always want to keep a moon bag. And you can always, if you're adamant, sell half, do that on, you know, or you can do question marks, do whatever you want. So you'll understand when that alert fires, you'll know what it means. Okay. So, um, but again, if you're trading without these indicators, you are going to lose against us. If you're not, you know, nothing against RSIs and MACDs and everything, except that everyone uses them and you don't have an edge. If you have our crypto mastery indicators, you have an edge and uh, can you afford not to have these? Um, uh, the implied answer would be no. So uh, that's that's my answer and I'm sticking to it. Um, I wouldn't trade without these, I'll be honest with you. In fact, I'll be honest too, when I first got back into crypto in 2018 and I didn't have these indicators and I was try I was building up my rule book and screenshotting the like crazy and RSIs and stochastic and, and at MACD and I was losing my shirt, my shirt. And and I to the point where I put it away and I, I said, this is too hard. And uh, fortunately, it came back. I had some Ethereum I left alone. And, you know, as many people say, my best trade ever was just putting it away for a few years and came back in uh, 2021. Now, I've been trading for 25 years, know how to read charts and everything. But I was, was losing until we got a hold of the indicators. And along the way, I had seen them when they were the creator was working with someone else and i am like that these look amazing i'd love to work with that person uh that person is joe of course uh as my partner on crypto mastery uh and a great guy and uh just uh, these are simple yet powerful he's the mad scientist who's a programmer and trader he builds sophisticated auto trading algorithms on the futures for the s p uh, often on the phone call, I'll hear noises in the background of bulls and bears grunting and bulls roaring. He has it automated where it's it, it's auto trading and the bulls where he's taking profits and the bears, are, you know. Uh, but fortunately, these indicators like the ERI. Now, I discovered the ERI. He made it better and uh, he created the virtually the rest of these. Now, I haven't shown you guys the rocket and uh, that is one of the pro indicators. And uh, those of you who know, you know, this is one of those those uh, setups that I I've, I've been noticing for years, and most people don't talk about, and they are they are few and uh, infrequent. But when they happen, uh, pay attention because they can go much higher. And I uh, thought we were going to get a rocket yesterday in Bitcoin, and sure enough, it did sell off toward the end of the day. So it's not a rocket, but it's still seeing some bullish signals. Here, uh, let's see. Look at H bar. Um, that to me, it looks very strong, and and it should be a rocket. Now, the rocket on the launch pad, just in case you're not familiar, and uh, in case you are already, as a reminder, uh, this is called the rocket on the launch pad because it looks like a bottle rocket. It's sitting on the launch pad, the EMA, the 21 or 50 EMA. Uh, that would be the launch pad of the body of the candle is the rocket fuel has to close right near the top though meaning that they pushed price right up to the end of the day 
And even if it sells off the next day, typically it shoots up much higher, as you can see. And of course, we liken it to a rocket as you go and light the fuse, shoots up in the sky, usually has a nice move up, and then it sells back and it falls back to Earth. Okay, uh, so what are we looking at here? I uh, I like uh, HBAR is not easily to, easy to get for U.S. traders, but what do we have? We did not get an ERI, but we do have, if we're doing the trade success checklist, we have an entry. Uh, we have a mostly green radar. Watch for that. TSI green, signal green, a key and a bell, and ATR green on the uh, the dynamic ATR. Um, the rocket, it, it looks pretty good but not quite a rocket, I guess. I, I would take that though, big candle. Look at that, it looks like a rocket to me. And sometimes we'll just say, if it's on a launch pad, the launch pad can be, uh, it can be a horizontal, uh, you can override it. Is that a support line? Pretty close. That blue line over to the left was uh, could be considered a vector candle in the past. So I, I would say that's a rocket, even though the software didn't catch it. I would consider that a, a, a beautiful looking trade there. So I would always look to invalidate. Look at, hey, look at that, you guys. Rocket on the weekly, though. See that? So H bar looking very good, you guys. When you get signals on the daily and weekly aligning, um, I would take that trade uh, in, in a heartbeat. And so what we'd want to do now is see, okay, well, how far could it go to the old all time highs? And I don't even remember what H bar does. And I must be doing this wrong here, unless they've changed. Oh, it's click and drag. All right. You know, 300X, the 3X on, on this, just to get to the old highs. You know what? It, it used to let me drag with without doing that, but it's you have to drag the pointer. But still, 300% to go back to the old highs. This is how I'm drawing this. See that? So, uh, you know, um, looks pretty good, pretty, pretty good. Any, any, uh, uh, what's that show? Um, <laughs> my memory's not working well today, you guys, uh, with Larry David on it. Anyway, looks pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. All right. Uh, mastery, still current name, Mastery Navigator. Okay. Rick says Mastery. I like Mastery. So we got people, uh, when you said price discovery, Perry, uh, price discovery zone is where it's above the old high. And the reason that's important, and we'll just kind of do a little of uh, a bit of training on that. And uh, we do teach you, you know, we teach you all these things in M3 Active Trader. It sounds like, you know, certainly I would recommend checking that out. But, um, Where's the ERI? Price discovery means the market makers, you know, they don't know where there's no resistance. See, the problem with this on the way up is you have sellers right in here. People that bought H bar here and it went down and they were losing money. Right in here, they're saying, honey, I promise I'm going to sell this. I'm sorry I lost money in the, in the savings account. I'm going to sell it as soon as I get back to break even. The weekends and then all the way up, people who bought here. Soon as it, honey, I I promise you, I, I swear on my on the on the Bible, and if it comes back, I'll I'll sell it at break even. This is uh, sell pressure and overhead resistance. Same thing here. There were people buying this right up here at the high of H bar. Okay. Honey, I, I promise I'll sell it. I, I'm sorry I lost the college. Uh, I, I'm sorry I lost Junior's college fund. And I'll sell it when it comes I, when it comes back to break even. What happens above that? No sellers. No resistance. The market makers let it run. Price discovery. Let it discover its own price. If you remember back in August of 2021 when we first recommended Solana at $35, and it broke into new highs, price discovery zone, it took off like a rocket. So right in here is price discovery zone. When you get up in this range, uh, you can see it really take off. That's the beauty of the bull run. And and, and that's that's what sucks about the bear market. It's it's really hard to kind of, you, you get these bear market bounces like back here and uh, get sold off as soon as, as soon as it happened. And uh, so anyway, um, 
check that out. Uh, that's a good explanation there. And let's see. Conference. Thank you. Love it. Love it. Marissa says, lovely to get together in Nashville. Yeah, I'd love to meet you. Um, you know, let's get a group together. Uh, Mike will be there. And Mike doesn't do conferences, but he's going to be there. Uh, and I won't tell you why. Um, he may or may not have moved and lived nearby now, but uh, that's all you'll get out of me. And uh, it'll be like it'll be like seeing the great white elephant, you guys. You know, you've often heard of it existed, uh, but never seen one. I, I have I have met Mike uh, on, on a couple occasions. Great guy. So um, anything else, you guys? How are we doing on time? I got to do the time check here and just kind of see uh, probably coming up on uh, at one thirty. Yeah, we're out of time, you guys. We will dive deeper and look at all of this in tomorrow's class in M3. And make sure to get signed up if you're not already. Go over to moonstream.io slash M3. Uh, it is not inexpensive, but it is worth every cent. You get the indicators included. And uh, we're dropping some serious alpha in there. I was dropping trades in there yesterday. Uh, we have, you get access to me 24-7 in this private signal chat here, which you can see. And this is me dropping screenshots. And we had a very healthy uh, and interesting conversation. Smart traders in there, okay, uh, ex contributing uh, to these uh this conversation so every day every day we're in there no matter if i'm out of the country um, by the way i will be out of the country uh two weeks for a bit but i'll still be on still be doing class don't worry as long as there's internet i'm here for you i've got your back and then we have the you can see some of the commentary here and uh some great feedback here that uh, you can find out there's a membership area we've got recordings of these classes and tomorrow's class in there uh some cheat sheets and other cool things like a portfolio tracker a dollar cost averaging trading template that i created that's interactive uh it's inside of a google doc so you can update that and if you ever want to do any private coaching you can share that with me and we can do some of that together i do a little bit of that you can find out more on the website, but uh, yeah, you get some cheat sheets, uh, candlestick patterns, cheat sheets. You need to have these guys, especially if you're new, these trading patterns that play out like that head and shoulders pattern, that simple pattern, but that was how I called the market top in 2021 and uh, another time later. And when the Elliott Wave uh, guy got it wrong. And uh, so anyway, you guys, you can find out more here, all of it, read every word on this, on this page here and get signed up so read some reviews we, but we've stopped adding them because we have so many and you can get a, a, a rundown on all these things and you get a hat oh here's my hat i forgot to put my hat on we are currently out we're sold out of these but i need a reason to order more m3 hats so come on guys uh love to have more of you on board these are some of our retire rich people so uh we just threw them on here but um uh they, they are all in m3 also so anyway, it's something for everybody. Uh, so basically, quick reminder too, uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube, uh, hit like, hit subscribe. Uh, go over to moonstream.io slash free and get signed up. Uh, this is a one-time only class. We only we only do this every so often when we think the markets are ready to run higher. Uh, Mike will be on, I will be on 8 p.m. Eastern Thursday, April 25th. And we're going to keep it short. You know, We're going to do a lot of you know who we are. We're going to do a, like a quick bio of who we are and put it out beforehand. If you don't care, uh, don't watch that. We'll get right to the point on the webinar. We're not going to give you our story and all of that. We'll send that out ahead of time and um, you can watch it or not watch it. Some of you, you don't care. Uh, we did have a lady, though, who was going to uh, email out for this webinar, and, and she said, I won't do it because it sounds too scammy and uh, because you guys don't tell, talk about who you are. And But I know that most of you don't care who we are. It's, it's more curiosity-based. Um, but anyway, can't please everybody. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Anything else, you guys? Uh, I don't see any comments or questions, so I'm going to let you go. Uh, so thanks, everybody, and uh, we'll get this out to you on the replay as soon as possible. And uh, again, we do dive a little deeper here uh, in tomorrow's class. And of course, our Retire Rich class, uh, we, we have a few spots open on that. And you can find out at moonstream.io. You have to email us after reading about it. That is a, a little bit deeper uh, dive into longer term picks m3 active trader is really where the, the action's at right now you know where how to trade these these bounces and uh, i'll be having some updates here this afternoon and tomorrow of course 
uh, on some trade. Uh, trades are looking good. And uh, of course, uh, this inner circle is kind of a, a, we've got a basket of what to buy and hold future Netflix and Amazons of the world. And uh, we talk about macro things and uh, I do have a limited number of uh, coaching, very limited. In fact, I don't know that I can do any more right now, you guys, because it's a busy couple of weeks coming up. And uh, so, and some of you are already uh, in the private one-on-one -on -one coaching. So anyway, you guys, um, that's about it. And um, by the way, uh, we are going to give an, an opportunity to give access for free to the Future of Crypto Summit recordings. If you show up and and take advantage of our special offer on Thursday for our Moonstream newsletter, I think we're going to give that away. And some of you paid for it, I know, I know. And uh, it's just a little bit, it may be a little dated now, still good information. I think you'll agree. So, all right. Thank you, everybody. And a question here is from Perry. Is there a legend to explain? Let's see. Can you guys see that? You can't see that if I drag the chat over. To explain each of the trend indicator symbols, dollar key, bell. Um, you know, there is a legend on the website. Uh, and uh, inside the members area, there's a an in-depth training. And so you can see an example of that. Uh, here and uh, we have these signals in there in the training for crypto mastery so you see signals here early reversal indicator that's the green arrow eri the trend indicators the key in the bell let's see if i can zoom in on this uh okay what could possibly go wrong and of course now it looks okay here there you go. I've got a, I've got another monitor over to my right. That's why I keep looking over there to see what you guys are seeing. So um, early reversal indicators, the trend indicator, the key. The key is your says it says basically, hey, there may be a new trend forming. The bell is the buy signal, and it's it's a fun one because it kind of looks like Mario Brothers is kind of come running out, jumping and grabbing all the coins, right? Um, great great one for follow through, especially on that weekly time frame. That trend indicator is excellent. And uh, so, yeah, I would definitely be paying attention to that. Again, the trend strength indicator, this, the ERITSI, those are my two go-to. Uh, we're going to have, at some point, I know we've been promising, it's just not easy to do. You need to hire a programmer, but I'm going to combine them into a, one so when they both fire in the right way, um, we, we could trigger a trade. And maybe we'll have a version that when the signal also fires, it'll auto-trade. And, uh, and we're also going to be coming out with some trade alerts, auto trade alerts. Joe's working on that. Uh, we had it working in 2021, and then we sort of put it on the back burner. But uh, anyway, that this is the explanation in a one-pager right there, Perry. So um, thanks for that. Here's some great examples. These So the circles are where the ERI and TSI lined up together. Um, is there any, can you see any patterns here? Back here, July of 20, this is actually July of 2017, caught the market bottom. Huge run up, 30X, 31X that caught. And then it caught the cycle top there on a, uh, I think this is a weekly time frame, and averted, you would have averted a 50%, sorry, 83% sell off. And then in 2019, flipped bullish, ERI, TSI green here, went up 300%, 3X, again, flipped bearish, red, red, 65% down. Flipped bullish. See the green arrow. See the green TSI. Went bullish again. Up another 885% on Bitcoin. Okay, so let me just see if I can get this uh, fitting the window a little better. And, and then uh, and then it caught the dot. It pulled back again. And I do know that. So it it we had it. We had the TSI breakdown here. Uh, we didn't get the ERI, but we had uh, bearish engulfing candle right there. And also the RSI Pro would have would have fired. So that we did catch that technically. I would have been out. Any bearish engulfing candle on the weekly time frame would have been out. And we almost had one. We almost had one, you guys. Uh, and we're going to look at that tomorrow. And that would have been a... a so one of the things I'm still going to do is basically a, a study, an M3 Active Trader. And I want you guys to prepare yourself, kind of like the emergency... Um, broadcast systems you know when they have that long beep and then it says if this were a real emergency blah 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 so you know what what the f to do if, if you hear it um, i'm going to do that and and create a big red email alert and alert to send out in the m3 chat saying uh you know exit alert and that will be based on a weekly eri tsi and a bearish engulfing 
because those three enough were enough for me to, to say this, we got to get out time to get out that'll be the top uh and there may be t there may be two tops like we saw in here but but this was clearly the time to get out nobody wanted to believe it we had in here the, the uh summer of 2021 by the way i remember this june 20 uh 2021 to the day into the week we had bullish signals boom boom caught that push up 100 percent averted 75 percent down with these signals if you got out um, I know some of you listened to me when I was saying get out of these markets in November and December and then January of 2022, I was pounding the table, get out. That's when this, uh, this signal fired. And then we had a little bear market rally. Nobody wanted to believe it. But uh, again, we got that red ERI and TSI. And so those who followed it were out all the way down to the 16.5 where I called the bottom. And then guess what? We had bullish. The, the chart. I've got to update this chart because then we went bullish on that monthly time frame. Uh, I'll leave you with this because if you haven't seen it, check this out. This is Bitcoin monthly. The ERI has only fired four times in its history. Okay. And each time was the market cycle bottom. If I go back far enough, I, and I'd have to go back a little farther, but I hit right here, ERI, boom, ERI. When was this? January, 2023, we were in this market and the ERI Pro is even better because it showed the buy block, the money flow. And this is where we were we were getting into this market. So now in all fairness, we didn't release the ERI Pro yet, but uh, this buy block is very encouraging, by the way, on this monthly time frame. So here's what I think. I'll go on record of saying that we do not dip down and close below 58K, 59K. If we, if we dip down and touch again, uh, we'll bounce again. I think this red candle stays here and i think we we'll have a three inside up we'll have a, a next candle up and that'll be very bullish signed so any pullbacks on this i would be saying get in dollar cost average into the market because down below we have this this 21 month ema uh and that's that's a sign of strength that that's done at 40k though so we don't want it to go that low uh and so all i wanted to show you just to complete that thought those of you that haven't seen it because once you see it you can't unsee it and why we're going to be really uh, happy when we see it next bull uh, bear market ending, but that's going to be a ways away. You see it down here. That was in 2012, called the market cycle bottom, shot all the way up. We caught it here in the depths of the 2015 market bottom. So only four times, you guys, it's ever fired. How, how do you like that? One. Two. If you all you did, if all you did is buy on these green arrows on the monthly time frame, with the ERI Pro, you'd be killing this market. And on the week, on the weekly time frame, selling with those three criteria. So that's why if you don't have uh, this indicator, you need to make sure that you get a hold of it at all costs. Uh, and I'm not, and I don't mean to sound self-serving. I would not want to be trading against us when you, without having it. Anyway, that's enough. Of that thank you everybody. Cheers. And again, if you're watching the replay, uh, thanks. And uh, hopefully we'll live stream again soon. I um, just let my mind, to be honest, I need to, uh, we're, we're playing with a couple formats here. So uh, we'll do that again soon. Maybe once a month, at least we'll do the live stream. All right. Uh, on, on YouTube specifically. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye.